Three weeks ago, police say a man walked into Hurley's Beverage, demanded money. Tracing it wasn't hard. The teacher typed the email from home using his school work account. Representative Nygren got it, read it, and immediately forwarded it onto the Capitol Police. You can see the destruction it left behind. It really speaks for itself. This used to be actually two barns, and this here was a silo. Right now, State Patrol has the road blocked off here on Hillcrest Drive. They're keeping us far away from the area where the shooting took place. He also listened to one victim, the very first girl to come forward, speak of the emotional impact this has had on her life. And just right here at the edge, it measures out to be about nine inches deep. The Department of Administration estimates 5,000 people filled the Capitol. You can see many of them are still on the steps there. They've been chanting and singing throughout the afternoon. It dropped about a half a foot. At its worst, officials say it was about five feet deep and very swift. Apple Creek was raging this morning, normally quiet. Last night's heavy rain forced it over its banks, engulfing tents and picnic tables. I got up at 3 o'clock and looked in the back. There was a little water laying there. Didn't think much. I went back to bed. Douglas Fulweiler was asleep in his RV when the sound woke him up. I heard a bang, and I opened the door of the motorhome, and there was a foot of water there. It came up that fast. In just three hours, the creek, which is normally no more than a foot and a half deep and eight feet wide, had swelled over its banks. The campground was quickly inundated with water. I'm guessing we have up to four feet at some locations. It's chest deep to, to, to your average adult out there. So um, the water is definitely up there in spots. So we want to make sure that people are not in those areas. Through the morning, emergency workers rescued about 40 campers by boat. Many watched as the water lapped up their belongings. They just came in with their boats and said we had to leave. And if we didn't leave, they were going to get the police. So we jumped in the boat and off we went. Everything floated away. And this isn't the first time the campground has flooded, but the owner tells me it was by far the worst he's seen. He also says the extensive damage is going to cost thousands of dollars to repair. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Live in Brown County, Molly Hendrickson, Action 2 News. In the pews of St. Mary's Church, people find comfort in prayer. Their faith is one of the few things that remains in place when so much around them is not. Some people are scared. You know, they're, they're, they got scared. It was a bad storm. That bad storm left a tree in Bill Cancel's living room. Lost part of our uh, chimney, broken windows. Still, on this Palm Sunday, and he's counting his blessings. Looking at his neighbor's house, he knows it could have been a lot worse. We were very fortunate here. No, no loss of life, no uh, injuries. It's a blessing. It'll take weeks, possibly even months, to clean up. I'm hoping to have everything cleaned up in our yard at least by June. That's my goal. <laughs> we'll see. Traditionally, it's a day of rest. For many, there is little time for anything but work. We've been working late every day. We've been working uh, almost dark every day. We worked yesterday, Sunday, today, we're working today. We'll be, we'll be like this for a while. And while things may never be exactly as they were, returning to what is normal will take nothing more than time and a little faith. In Kakana, Molly Hendrickson, Action 2 News. Every day, millions of people arrive at work and log on to find an inbox full of emails. But some deserve a little more attention especially when you're a member of the Wisconsin legislature in the middle of a fierce political battle. In today's world, however, you know, I mean, we, we've seen you know, the shootings and the sh shooting in Arizona, and, and that all started with an email. And so does this story. This email was sent March 25th, laced with expletives. The sender writes, I pray that a semi-truck will run you over. If there is a God, Governor Walker will be riding with you when the truck hits. I think the biggest concern I had was the vulgarity of it, the anger behind it, and the fact that um, if uh, he's a teacher in a classroom. It... That email came from Rob Schneider, a choir teacher at Peshtigo High School who's been in the district for 18 years. Tracing it wasn't hard. The teacher typed the email from home using his school work account. Representative Nygren got it, read it, and immediately forwarded it on to the Capitol Police. Once they had it, he then forwarded it on to the school district. High school administration and myself, along with the union rep, took that opportunity to meet with Mr. Schneider and uh, 
don't really validate the information. He was placed on paid administrative leave in April. We tracked him down at his Pesh to go home. You have no comment about the email you sent? Not, nothing to say to you until I talk to my lawyer. But he wasn't doing much talking. The incident is expected to be discussed next week during a closed hearing before the school board. Nigren doesn't think the teacher was threatening his life, but says you can never be too safe. In Peshtigo, Molly Hendrickson, Action 2 News. Chris Rapsky has more on Hall's latest confession and why he's decided to talk to the media. And we spoke with Lori Depps' mother today asking for her reaction to Hall's interview, why she's skeptical of his story tonight on Action 2 News at 5. Kerbitz police say three people remain hospitalized this afternoon from this week's apartment fire. One is being treated at a hospital in Green Bay and is expected to be released tomorrow. The other two are in Milwaukee, but it's not known when they'll be released. Thirteen people were originally admitted to the hospital with smoke inhalation after the fire started early Wednesday morning. Investigators are still trying to figure out what was the cause. Green Bay police arrest a 53-year-old in connection with an overnight stabbing. It happened around 1.30 this morning on the 800 block of South Chestnut Street. Investigators say the suspect stabbed a 40-year-old man in the stomach while the two were fighting. The victim suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Police say alcohol was involved but did not say what started the fight. Action 2 News has learned the plan to recycle materials from the old Washington Commons Mall is now on hold. City officials tell us bonding fell through for the Milwaukee-based salvage firm picked to recycle the mall before it's taken down this fall. The project was supposed to generate $200,000 for the city. The city's redevelopment authority has scheduled a special meeting for Wednesday to discuss how to move forward. The death toll from last Sunday's devastating tornado in Joplin, Missouri, now stands at 132. Unfortunately, at a news conference today, emergency officials updated us on their efforts to find the 232 people listed as missing. We have authorities believe many of the missing are alive and safe, but simply have not been in touch with friends and family. At the same time, they also caution at least some of the names on the list are likely among the dead. President Obama will visit the victims of the Joplin tornado this weekend, but first he has to finish his six-day trip to Europe. He landed in the Polish capital of Warsaw today, the final country on his schedule. He then laid wreaths at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in the Warsaw Ghetto Memorial before attending a dinner with Central and Eastern European Union leaders. Tomorrow, the president will meet with the Polish political leaders and hold a news conference with the country's prime minister before his return flight to Washington. The city of Green Bay is looking at changing a parking ordinance banning lawn parking except during Packers home games. This after several residents asked the city to allow people to park on their lawns for the upcoming Kenny Chesney concert at Lambeau Field in June. The Schwabenon residents are okay to park cars on their lawns because the village allows lawn parking for any events held at Lambeau Fields. It's an age-old debate, and I think I know the answer. Who's the better driver, men or women? A new study has the answer, Head and ladies, you are not going to like what you hear. Uh -oh.